Welcome to the 4th EG screencast on grid computing brought to you by the direct user support team. During this screencast we will discuss data management operations on the grid. We will start discussing in a general context the tools and utilities we have at our disposal and move to a few simple hands-on examples. On the grid level files are stored on storage elements. While there are several storage elements to keep track of our files, a central service with the name Logical File Catalog or simply LFC is used. Thus, any file that is stored for the first time on a grid storage element is also registered by some name on the logical file catalog service. We can refer to a grid file in several ways. The most commonly used ones are the GUID of the file, which stands for its grid unique identifier, the LFN of the file, which stands for logical file name, and the SURL of the file, which stands for storage uniform resource locator. Notice that while we may use several logical file names and as URLs to refer to a file, there can be only one grid unique identifier to relate to that file. For the moment, let's take a closer look and see how this works. The GUID of a file is unique per file, as its name suggests, so regardless of how many replicas of that file exist on grid storage elements, there can be only one GUID on the local file catalog referring to all those files. As the example suggests, GUIDs are a little bit impractical to master, so usually we use logical file names to refer to files that have been stored on the grid. These resemble a directory structure which makes file management more convenient and user-friendly. Notice however that I may use more than one logical file names to refer to the same file, regardless of how many replicas of that file exist on grid storage elements. As you can see on the following slide, storage URLs point to the exact location of a file on the grid. So, for each replica or instance of a file on the grid, there is exactly one storage URL. Storage URLs are however once again impractical, so we prefer not to use them. As a final comment, notice that regardless of which identifier one may use to refer to a file, the logical file catalog service is used to make that reference. To manage entries in the logical file catalog, a special set of commands is available. These are the LFC commands and they are used to query and manage logical file names referring to data and not to data itself. The LCG commands are used for data manipulation, such as uploading, replicating and downloading. Notice however that whenever issuing an LCG command, the logical file catalog is queried. Let us now return to the command line and perform a demonstration of the things we have discussed so far. I firstly use the WinSCP utility to connect to the UI and copy a file I want to copy later on onto the grid. I type in the host name, my username and my password. Once the connection has been made, I use drag and drop to copy my file onto the user interface. I select copy and as soon as the upload is done, I close the connection by closing the window. I then open PuTTY to connect to the UI. Once again, I have to provide my username and my password. In order to use the LFC and LCG commands, I also need to create a proxy using VOMS proxy init. I do that by using the minus VOM flag followed by the name of my VO. As you can see, I also have to provide the secret passphrase. To upload my file to the grid, I will use the LCGCR command, which stands for LCG Copy and Register. The command will upload my file to a grid storage element and also register it to the logical file catalog. Going back to the command line, the last thing I need to do before uploading my file to the grid is defining the LFC underscore host environmental variable. I then check that the file I want to copy and register is present under my current path and then I use the lcgcr command as already discussed to copy that file to the grid. I use the minus v flag so that I, uh, the output is verbose and using the minus l flag I define the logical file name for that file. I then define the file on the local file system. Notice that in the logical file name 
I do not have to define the exact same file name as the one that is present on my user interface. Having that said, you can see that I have not included the .png extension to my file. So, now that the transfer is over, one may notice that the last line of the transfer is the GUID of the file. To query my file on the grid and see to which storage element it has been transferred, I use the lcg-lr command. This queries the logical file catalog and returns the SURL of my file on the grid. So, returning back to the user interface, I type the lcg-lr command and as an argument I use the logical file name of the file I have just uploaded. As you can see in the output of this command, my file has been transferred to the sa onefrodigitalgrigr storage element. The last command we will be discussing is the lcgcp command. Using this command I can download back my file into the user interface. Once again, this is a relatively simple command. I just type in lcg-cp and then as an argument I provide the logical file name of the file that I want to download. This is slash grid slash hdemo slash cheat sheet. As a second argument, I provide a name under which the file will be saved on the local file system on the user interface. Just not to get things confused, I use the same cheatsheet.png file name. So, I check that my download has finished using ls-l and now I can transfer that file back to the desktop I have been working all along using the WinSCP utility. Once again, I have to type in the host name of the user interface I want to connect to, the username and my account password. So once the connection has been made, I can simply drag and drop that file onto the desktop of my local machine. So that's the end of today's screencast. During our next screencast, we will combine the things that we have learned in the previous two screencasts, namely basic job submission and data management, when we will submit a job that will do data management from the worker node directly. Until then, and on behalf of the direct user support team, thank you for watching.